So after watching Dave Chappelle's latest SNL monologue yesterday, I, I was really struck by something that he said, which really resonated with me, especially in these uh, polarized and, and kind of uh, kind of crazy times when it comes to discourse. But he said that uh, I don't hate anybody; I just hate that feeling. And yeah, like it's it it really resonates with me for what's going on. I see such a such a polarized culture these days, and seems to be getting really bad in America and it, it seems, you know, the, the the thought of a civil war has been thrown around and not not in any kind of jest or, you know, it doesn't sound ridiculous. It seems like there could be potential for a civil war at some point. And that's a that's really a, a sobering thought. It's quite crazy to think how polarized America has become. And yeah, I, th I think it's just because there's, there's so much hate and there's so much anger and, and people aren't really hearing each other. And it's, it's, I guess, part of that is just, by the way, discourse has, has gone. And it's, it's really sad to see. It's really, it's really hard kind of times to, to look at it. But I think uh, to, to the philosophical approach of just kind of staying objective with it and just, again, not, not hating either side. Because you got to think that, like, if a country, if 50% of a country votes for someone like Trump and 50% votes for someone like Biden... They can't be wrong, you know what I mean? You can't just say, oh no, th like this is, it's not like choosing between Hitler and, and actually Hitler is another person that it's like, well, maybe we shouldn't have such a, a demonized view because you have to understand that people voted for Hitler in 1933. People voted for Trump, like half the country voted for Trump. Half the country voted for Hillary, half the country voted for Biden. And like, these are all very, these are very close elections. And, and for one side to hate the other, it's, it's, it's not it's not a small minority that we're talking about here. This isn't a small minority of hating people or unreasonable people. You have to understand that these people have their own fleshed out worldviews and they've got their reasons for choosing that and it's the best choice that they can see. And it's scary how little people can see that. It's scary how demonized the other side has become. You look back at an election like Barack Obama and John McCain, you see two people of such a shining like integrity and so much respect now for both of them and yeah it's, it's just strange how, how far things have kind of decayed in the last 10 years that we kind of look now and it's just how shrill either side have become how hateful and like children with their their fingers in their ears and it's just because they feel that hate so much. It's it's they're so activated, and I think a large part of that is social media. The social dilemma really brought that home to me. Just how much people are moving into these echo chambers. Social media pins people into echo chambers, and so they can't hear the other side. They don't. They have no ears for it, and it's impossible for a democratic for a Democrat to watch Fox News, and it's impossible for a Republican to watch CNN because of how biased those outlets are towards towards their side yeah we just live we live in a time where it's it's really just it's quite scary it's quite dismaying i suppose more than more than scary it's just kind of uh what 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 are we supposed to do what has caused this problem and for me i guess something that i see has maybe caused the problem is is it's around political correctness and I think political correctness comes from a great place. You know, it's, it's about it's about trying to remove the the negative aspects, the the, the parts. It's it's trying to create a, an equal playing field for everyone, and that's the the foundation of of a good democracy and of a good republic. Is is making sure that everyone gets equality of opportunity at the same starting point, and so it's trying to stop women from being held back by negative stereotypes about women. Same with people of color. Of any color so it's 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 well intentioned in that original genesis and it's just that i think over time as things have have kind of political correctness has seeped into public discourse and it said no you can't use that word you can't talk about that you can't talk about this and that was its way of trying to bring in that agenda because it says well if we remove racism and sexism from the public discourse then maybe this problem will disappear but it hasn't. And as the problem isn't solved and as the other side becomes more entrenched, then what we see is that the dial being turned up. And so it's like, oh, maybe we need to become even more 
policing even more alert with we need to shut down even more conversations that's that's where we've been remiss but I, I think the problem is not in polishing public discourse it's not in removing all the negative words that people can say the solution lies not in in removing things from the discourse but in having ugly conversations because it's what the other side says is going to be ugly to you you're not going to want to hear what they're going to say and it's only in the clash of those things and those the clashes seem dangerous and Jordan Peterson is, is a great example of this. He's such a lightning rod for these conversations. He has these conversations with people from the other side, or he has had conversations. And those conversations, while they're not like clean, the, the one with GQ is, was a good one. And you think of like, that's, a, that's a, a very intelligent woman who's done a lot of research and she's very, very intelligent, very well educated. And they have that conversation. And while it, it not, it's not like they agree on everything, I think it's, it's to have that conversation where one side can feel like, yes, my voice has been heard, and so can the other. And I think that that's the most important thing is for people to feel heard. I think part of the reason why people go to Trump is because if their views aren't represented, if political correctness has scratched their views from the mainstream media and from most of culture because Hollywood is so left-leaning as well so if, if their views aren't represented if, the, if they don't feel like their voice is being heard then they will turn to someone like Trump that is the thing is that I don't think anyone thinks that Trump is a good person well no there's probably a lot of people that think he's a good person but I think the majority of people that voted for Trump they don't think he's like a, a knight in shining armor they don't think he's like a great example of a human being I don't think any of them want someone like that in their family but I think on the other hand you got to look at if you don't feel like your voice is being heard and this guy is representing your views now maybe he's not representing like maybe you don't you're probably not going to agree with everything he says but if he's saying things that you believe in and the other side are demonizing him for having those views for all of his views because of some of his worst the worst things that he says then you're going to feel more a stronger attachment to him because you're going to feel like your voice is in danger of not being heard at all you're going to feel like your voice is totally being judged and so you're going to flock more towards someone like trump even though he's not a great person you're going to feel like well at least he says what's true at least he says he represents some of my views and if my views are going to be demonized by mainstream then fuck it you know and you got to think that that's where the polls went wrong uh, this time round and last time round like yeah sure Trump didn't win the election but he got a lot more votes than the pollsters thought he would and I just got to feel like people they don't feel like they can even publicly admit that this is what they believe in but what's happened is that when you suppress people's views when you take the ability to talk about that out of the discourse when you feel when you shame someone for what they believe in or for holding a certain belief if you may, yeah, if you, if you shame them, then you don't get rid of that belief, not by a long shot. What you've done is you've plastered over that negative part. You've painted over a big mold stain in your vision of culture, rather than having a conversation with that, rather than getting to the cause of it. Why is this here? Is there something to learn here? Do they have a point? So rather than doing that, you scrub it from the, the discourse and then you haven't, all you've done is you put up a wall and now you're both on either side and there's a fucking wall between you. So it's a worrying trend that's that's been going on with this course and I don't know where it ends but I, I think it's important that we have conversations. It's important that people from each from both sides feel heard and it, it's great if we can if we can have people who represent those views well with wisdom and they have conversations with the other side which aren't filled with animosity, which aren't filled with like, oh I just want to take this person down, but actually going into it being like let's have a conversation let's have a debate and let's see if we can come away from it having learned something and the viewers benefit from that the observers are benefit from that because it's the they feel their views are represented and then they become more open to seeing where the ground can move so if we remove those conversations from discourse you don't get rid of it you don't solve the problem you drive it underground and i think that's really where a lot of this populist movements have popped up over the last decade over the last five years really and you get people like trump you get things like brexit all of these like things that would have seemed impossible before because yes small small parts of the population were kind of like xenophobic in britain but why did why did more than half the population vote for brexit 
why do more than half the population, well, in neither occasion did more than half the population, but how did Trump get into office four years ago? And how is he doing it? How did he get almost half the vote this time around? And those are questions we have to ask. And I think it would be a big mistake for people on the left, for Democrats to be anything but magnanimous in victory because Biden is a great candidate with talking about unity and really that that is what needs to happen in America going forward because if the people are still shamed for the beliefs that they hold then all you get is you get a deepening of the rift so we need to find a way to build bridges to have those conversations otherwise we could see a civil war in the States, which is a scary thought, and it's, it seems like a potential disintegration of the West. So, yes, we want to get rid of transphobia, um, bigotry, sexism, racism. We want to get rid of all these things, but the way to do it doesn't seem to be through the discourse, by shutting out things from the public discourse. It's got to be through having conversations. It's got to be from taking people from both sides and having those views come together. And through doing that people from both sides can feel educated and can come away from it with something. And it's that enantio drama, it's that, it's that conversation of the opposite that slowly allows an integration. And this is the, the Jungian principle of individuation, of the ego and the shadow, is that the, the, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. And unless you bring those together, unless you have a conversation between those, those opposite pieces, then they become more and more sharply divided and they become more and more autonomous and, and separate. And it's only by bringing them back together and mixing those can you make something cohesive. Can you make a, a culture that is divided come back together? Because if you think someone who is transphobic, someone who is racist, someone who is sexist, they're only going to listen to people who hold their point of view. They're not going to go listening to the other side if the other side is only giving an entirely their point of view if they're only giving one a one-sided argument you got to look at like how can we strike a balance here and the thing is is that like people will come to a conversation if they believe that their view is going to be upheld and that's why we need both sides and this used to be the role of the media was to have both sides there but now you get one side going to their respective echo chamber the other side going to theirs and it just it's just like veering pathways away from each other. And that just is not good for, for our culture, for our society. It's by having these opposite views converse, that things can slowly converge, that these views can come together and you will never get a final agreement. And that's not what you want. I think you want that. You want people to have different views. That's, that's the, the beauty of a republic. That's the beautiful of people having those different conversations. But by having the conversations, we can manage to live with each other again. And because it's, it's just scary to see how polarized things have become. And I think it would be great to see a platform or some kind of, I don't know, just a place where people are having those conversations where they're, they've got opposing views, but they're not shamed for them. It's, it's a conversation because then people who identify with that view can vicariously and through their best self. I mean, this was the old ideal of a republic was you don't vote for the person who's most like you. You vote for the person who's, who's wiser than you, who's wise enough to balance the views of the entire community and to choose the wisest course forward. So if we can get our best people to be having conversations, the like stoic sages, people who aren't just going to emotionally react and become entrenched in their views, but be willing to change and have an open conversation, then vicariously people on um, who identify with either side can have that balanced conversation as those people are. And yeah, I just think that would be a positive way forward and a way we can move beyond this this present uh, impasse in, in culture. So those are my thoughts on what's going on at the moment. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe. And uh, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Otherwise, I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching.